This was uh, this was inevitable. A uh, new fan because the bearing in my blower fan uh, assembly is absolutely knackered. This is dirt simple. There's three screws that put this into the housing and a wee vent uh, line to, I guess, when it's mounted like this, moisture can accumulate in the bottom near the near the commutator and they put a wee vent line to, I guess, try and dry it. So that's kind of clever, I think. At least I think that's the intention of the line. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, what I'm interested in is actually the control for the blower, the speed control for the blower. Um, there's a lot of detail in this manual here. Um, this is basically the HVAC controller. Uh, the points of interest is the 12 volt feed coming through just a, a relay, uh, fan, a blower fan relay. And here's the motor itself, the shunt diode, I suppose. And um, here's the blower controller. And you'll notice there is no resistors. There is no blower resistors. This is a climate control type system. And I thought it was actually kind of interesting how they've done this. So I looked at this and I thought, well, what is that? It's a field effect transistor, uh, RC network, coming back to the controller. How does this work? It doesn't really explain it in the description and operation. So I thought I would actually hook up my scope and see if I could figure out how this actually works. So in addition to the schematic, Suzuki are actually good enough to give us actually um, some uh, test points in, in the event you're having an issue. And what I've done is actually just tapped off this particular test point. So the, two, the test points that we're actually hooked up to on the scope that you'll see actually shortly are actually just these two points basically right across the blower. So we're going to have a steady 12 volt supply. We're going to have a varying 12 volt supply that's actually varied uh, indir indirectly from the uh, HVAC controller. It applies a control vol voltage onto the blower controller and the blower controller actually uh, varies the voltage on the ground side of the blower so the differential of course between the two voltage actually gives you your blower speed so as i said in the manual they were good enough to actually give you those voltages so with the 12 volts are given on the one side and these are the voltages that you'll get on the other side depending on the the blower selector as you can imagine in the off position both sides will be at roughly 12 volts and the differential will become greater and greater and greater until uh, you're at the maximum speed, of course. So I thought this was kind of interesting. So keep these figures in mind. And we'll actually go and take a look at the, uh, at the scope I've got set up. And um, I'll see if I can clarify uh, what, the, what I'm actually on about here. So again, I'm just uh, pinned across the two... Uh the two uh, wires that actually feed the uh, the fan, the, uh, the system feed and the uh, control side. And of course, my current clamp is on the feed side to actually measure the current. And you can actually hear how noisy it is. So that's why it's getting changed. Okay, so here's the, uh, the scope set of voice. I've actually got uh, three channels actually on, although it looks like four, I'll explain that in just a moment. Um, I've got channels one and two, they're just set up for the voltage. Uh, channel one, the yellow channel, is actually will just be the fixed 12.6 volts ish, right? It's the uh, battery voltage, if you will, when the system is actually turned on, it's showing zero now. And I've just got a slight offset between channels one and two, just so you can see there is, in fact, a uh, channel there. I'm on uh, five volt per division scale. Uh, so, right now, of course, these are reading zero. <clears throat> I've got some measurements actually taken down here for quick reference purposes. Um, the purple channel, which is channel three, is actually the, I've got my current clamp set up onto the, uh, to the feed to the blower, just so we can get a look at that. See how the current actually steps up and, uh, as we go through the various speeds. And I've actually got the red line there is actually the math channel. Let me see if I can get you in a wee bit tighter. Maybe a wee bit better. The red line is actually the math channel. So the red line is actually set up to show A minus B, or that is to say the differential between the uh, channel one and two. So as the differential gets greater, the math channel line will actually step up. I hope that actually makes some sense. So I'll actually turn the system on and we'll see uh, what happens. So you can see uh, channels one and two have actually stepped up to about 12.6 volts. 
uh, that would be the yellow and the green line. There is no differential. Uh, this blower speed is actually in the off position at the moment, so there is no differential uh, between the voltage and, of course, so the blower is now running. As you can see, the math channel is right down at uh, zero volts, right on the baseline, and there's no current. So let's put on uh, speed one. So there's blower speed one. You can see we uh, the, the math channel has actually picked up the differential between the uh, two channels. That's about four volts at the moment. So the differential is about four volts. Four volts across the uh, blower motor is gonna give us a current draw of about 3.7 amps. As you can see, the amps have actually stepped up as well. So I won't labor the point here, boys. I'll just step up, I'll step through the eight steps in the uh, blower motor speed. This is step one. So there'll be seven more to go. Speed two, speed three, speed four, five, six. Sorry, that was actually seven. So I missed a step there. I must have miscounted that, boys. My apologies. So that's actually maximum. So you can see uh, we have a, a differential. Um, we're down close to the ground uh, voltage, if you will, just about 0.5 volts, residual volts, pretty near ground on channel two. Of course, we've got the supply voltage. It's dropping because I've had the uh, blower actually going inside my garage here. So of course, the car is not actually running. Um, so we'll go basically 12 volts across the blower drawing about 16 amps. That's a wee bit higher than I actually thought. Could be because of the bearing drag. Um, it'll be interesting to compare this to the new blower when I actually change it. This is still the original blower. As I said, the bearing is knacked. It's knocking away in the bottom of the, uh, the housing there at the moment. And you can see the, uh, of course, pretty characteristic uh, spikes on the uh, on the uh, blower there. The current draw as you can, is obviously the different segments of the commutator. So there's just a quick look at the original blower, which is in fact, uh, surprisingly, a Mitsubishi product in the Suzuki Vitara. And uh, of course, this is uh, the aftermarket product. God knows where from China. So 12 volts, well, that's good. No amperage rating on it. The manual tells me this is supposed to be uh, 12 amps at 12 volts. So what's that, 144 watts-ish. Um, Interestingly, I hope this isn't going to cause any grief. Um, you can see the connectors are are pinned out the same. It appears to be the same arrangement, but configured differently. This is on the vertical plane, and this is on a horizontal plane, of course. So, uh, uh, anyway, a uh, little uh, coupling for the vent line appears to be about the same, oriented the same. So, dimensionally, roughly the same. So we'll see what happens when I actually install it. Uh, it came with this adapter connector, um, but the pinout changes when you put the arrangement goes from two horizontal to one horizontal, one vertical. So can't see that being any use. That must be for some other application. But we'll put it in, see how it goes. Straightforward enough to put it in, as I said. It's only three screws to mount it and the vent line, very straightforward. Be aware the manual does tell you to deactivate the uh, airbag system. Um, just in the interest of letting you know. Throw removed and there's no point showing you this. This installation is a piece of piss. It's as simple as it gets. Three screws, you can see two of them are visible there. And uh, no issue with the connector. I've just pulled back the sleeve in a little bit so I can get my current clamp around that. So I can actually check to see how much current this new one actually, uh, actually pulls. And I'll let you hear it. Not bad, not dead silent, but a lot quieter than the other one. So there you go. We'll see what this, uh, we'll see what kind of current this thing actually pulls. The system is off, so here we go. That's speed one. 
two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> and that's speed seven, speed seven and eight. So you can see actually the uh, blower current is actually done significantly. Um, it does sound, to be fair, it does sound like the fan is actually no, no putting out quite as much volume. So maybe that's to be expected from an aftermarket uh, fan. So I think of the fuel I'll be saving. There's five amps differential. Uh, hopefully uh, I still get effective demisting and uh, heating of course in the vehicle. So anyway, I'll just uh, step it backwards quickly. So that's eight, seven, six, five, four. You can see the differential between channels one and two is actually closing. The current obviously dropping. Three, two, one, and off. Channels one and two should effectively read the same. The math channel reads zero. And uh, well, the current clamp obviously is uh, a wee bit of splurious current shown there. So anyway, I hope that made some sense, boys. Uh, I really just wanted to see this because I wasn't sure whether it was pulse width modulated. Um, the fan doesn't appear to be. I don't see any pulsing going on there. Uh, it just appears to vary the DC voltage, um, the controller. And um, yeah, so I thought it was kind of interesting to, to, to see it on the scope. Um, yeah, for my sake, if not yours. Okay, so the other one's all in, boys. Uh, there was no issue with the uh, connector. It all went in straightforward enough. Well, even though it was oriented uh, slightly different, the harness was fine. Shroud went on just fine. Um, here is the part number. It is, there's three different models. This is actually the expensive model from, this is a rock auto bill. Uh, so with a wee bit of shipping, it's in the exchange rate. I guess it was, I don't know, 125 bucks Canadian or something. Um, Tonight's musical recommendations, Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. Sorry about the uh, glare. Uh, if you don't know who Steve Harley is and Cockney Rebel, go check them out. Fantastic band um, from the early 70s. Um, both my older brothers love this guy. So uh, uh, as I do, go check them out if you get the chance. Right, that's it, boys. Cheers.